effort on that CT site. They wound themselves back into the sites, turtled up, and made things really difficult. But now we go on to Dust2. And for me, this is a do or die map, obviously, for order, because this is the pick. This might be the hill that they die on here at POL. Yeah, this is Renegade's choice as well. A map where they've looked damn solid. The closest game they had was 16-14 over Chiefs. But even if you exclude that, it was 16-10 over Avant and Order. And they've been just looking. They, uh, they're 6 out of 6 on it as well, right? They haven't lost this map. They haven't lost any maps, actually, for quite a while. It's been an 18 win streak when it comes to officials, which is pretty unbelievable. Now we come into the pistol round as Renegades have already got control over a long and they've crossed to the site with barely a lick of damage Ooh. taken, but a quick headshot to Malta shuts down the hopes of pushing A. Luckily though, Renegades didn't put all their eggs in one basket. They're already out on B as well. They're everywhere. They just need that bomb to follow itself in. Ooh, Valiance does keep things interesting. But it's Hats here now and Dexter to combine to make things work. Hats on that Glock. He will escape out of this B-bomb site here. But he has the bomb. He is pincered. And it's surely a matter of time before he's taken down. And that is a great round from order there. You could, It just it kicked off when Ali landed that headshot onto Malta. Things happened so quickly. There was a lot of action across the map. And order have looked great in the pistol rounds. You can't fault that. It's the gun rounds where things have been a little bit dicey. So... This is another good start here from Order. They need to go on from here. They need to capitalize. It looks like they're very clued on to what Renegade's tendencies are on pistols. Yeah, certainly. I think as well, when it comes down to individual tools, Order don't fall that far behind. It's when you add in and incorporate the extra levels. Like, Renegade's just seem to be so good at playing off each other. And in pistols, especially when you're over on the CT side, but just in general as well. You're seeing renegades take these take these duels that are all kind of dry peaks. They're going in head to head fights. Whereas when it comes down to the full buy rounds, they've got their utility to play around, and that's I think where they just come ahead so much. At the moment, you're seeing even utility being bought up on the pistol. The eco, I should say. They've got some smokes, one already on top mid or bottom mid, and another still in play to get them across. Uh, the issue for them at the moment is that Ali has an M4, not a scope, not a scout. If he had a scout, it would make it a little bit easier, but he can spray them down, fall back, and set up yet again, taking or giving a lot of damage as he goes. Ooh. Maybe a bit too adventurous there, though. He does fall to Dexter, that P250. The flank is coming in from Ustilo, and he is supported well, but they need to be careful. Dexter's in a very... Compromising position at Elevator. He's just going to be rounded out, though, so a good retake from Order, but the objective was achieved. They got themselves a much-needed bomb plant, Renegades, and it's now on Order, just trying to upgrade their weapons where possible. More expensive weaponry, obviously, going to be of key value. Those Famuses would be more likely to contend against AKs, but the Renegades buy surely will come out now. Yep, there it is. Sicko with that all, unsurprisingly, as well. Watch that duel between the two players, Ali and Sicko, on this map. That AWP duel is going to be both tantalizing, but also very key in how these early rounds will go. Neither of these players shy away from dueling one another, too. What I've always found interesting about Dust2 is, I'll, I'll simplify the stats a little bit, but it's generally going to be, uh, whenever the CT side finds the opening duel, they win that round. This is just general stats for the map, 68% of the time. Whenever the T's find the opening duel, they win at 77%. So the, the terrorist side has a much higher win rate um, in rounds where they find the, the opening success than on most other maps. But what I find interesting about this matchup in particular is that both of these teams are above 80% in just general rounds where they win the opening duel, that they actually convert the round. So it, it shows really... And then you've taken into consideration as well, especially with these two teams, a lot of the time that they go down a man, they're actually trading straight off the bat. We've seen that a lot over this series already. So the, it really speaks to the, I guess, the gap in skill between these teams and others in the region. I think like top four, top six, especially, versus the teams that they'll normally be playing against. But I think for Renegades, the stats are a little bit more impressive because obviously they play at top level international. Top level A hit is going to be what they have to deal with right now. Alistair gets one. I thought he would have done more damage there to Renegades. Probably unlucky not to as Malta clears the flank. Valiots 
He's left wondering. And now Jira and Rick here. Well, I feel like it's the same as Vertigo. Jira and Rick here left with their heads scratching. Forced to retake the A bomb site once more. And it is a two versus three. So they can still throw caution into the wind and go for this. But that key jewel is going to be one and lost along here. Sicko, he doesn't make any mistakes. Takes Rick here away. And four has been removed from the crab. <laughs> He's a crab now, is he? Just uh... Theoretically speaking, order of the crab. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, I get you. It's like an allegiance, a crustacean allegiance. Who, who's the shrimp? Yeah. One of one of everything. It's like um, it's like the Covenant in Halo. Vote for Zoidberg. <laughs> oh, they'll flash around the smoke. They're gonna push on through. Ah, oh, unfortunate for Jira. Pistol not getting anything done, but Ali last bullet catches that frag. The fallback. They think they're gonna catch him off, but Valiance is here, covering the retreat. The op shot missed by Sicko, and Renegades getting answered back on so quickly. Sicko has to hit the what? How is he still alive there? He didn't get another shot off, luckily. Oh my goodness, he just swatted Valiance. That is literally the equivalent to hitting the fly midair with the swat. <laughs> I actually thought he may have landed that second as well. It was looking quite dangerous. Ali, taking a bit too long for my liking to put him to rest. But this long hold was really well done by Ali and Valiance. We just combine the two of them. Alliance. An alliance, maybe? An alliance, exactly. That's it. You're combining the two of them. It would be an alliance. There you go. The jokes write themselves. For Renegades, you know, the, the spot that they're in after winning that round and just losing it after is, is quite deflating. But again, their T side is solid normally on this map. But they average between nine and ten rounds. And then consistently, I think there's only one team that you wouldn't consider a, a top level or a really respectable opponent. It's pretty pretty impressive stats for them. But order, they're coming in. I, I'm all I'm just I'm so nervous, Jim. Really, the early half looking good. But what happens at round five? If <laughs> we've seen it before, after this one, things can spiral out of control. <laughs> it's the, it's the classic distance trap. It's good from afar, but far from good. Always at arm's length when it comes to renegades within punching distance. Yeah, it feels against a lot of these teams, they do have, you know, the height and the reach advantage over their opposition right now. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these teams in this region are, are still growing, per se. But Renegades, let's just see what they can produce here at the moment too. So really important that they, at the very least, get a bomb plant in this round. Otherwise, Order are going to continue to extend that lead. Now, this early duel, as I said, neither of these two players... Ooh shy away from one another and taking the duel. But Alistair does a really good job of moving that AWP around on all these maps. So right now, he's trying to lock things down at long. Sicko landed a lot of damage towards Jira. And whilst a lot of damage has been exchanged, everybody still remains active in this round at the very least. Now, Sicko, Ali, this duel is going to continue to rage throughout these maps. And Sicko again gets another one up onto Alistair. The head-to-head -head between these two players on an AWP. It's always a tantalizing prospect. Gorgeous work. Sicko's already lit down Jira to 17 health, so this has been a very successful early round for Renegades. They are still running into the A side, though. And with a double long hold, this could get dangerous with Ince being the solo player to push through there late on. They still have the option to fall back. But with no control in tunnels, they were just baiting out with a little bit of utility to try and get that rotate to happen and a player to push up so they could catch the flanker. Now, though, they commit to the site. Ustilo needs to come up and snap right back oh. at them, but he only oh. catches the first. Afterwards, shut down. And Ince now spotted on long, but the thing is, Jira's the only one left to defend here, and he can't even afford to commit to the fight on Ince because he's so low. He could just be peeked from sight and dropped immediately. So he looked to sight, but instead got peeked by Long. That's a you, unfortunate. It was a 50-50. You've got to be feeling for, for you, Stilo, right then and there. That lineup, that was there. That was there for the taking. Couldn't make it work, though. So 
unfortunately. I think obviously but, he he saw the first guy right, shot him, and then flicked to the right because he didn't expect them to all be lined up like that. Yeah, bullet penetration. Not quite working in his favor right now. Order. Trying to save this double orb setup. And it's going to give them some options into this next round. They're going to try and build an arsenal around these two players. The economy will be good enough to do so. So at the very least here, expect Order to take Ooh, the fight. That, that duel, as I said, Siko and Ali, two former teammates. They're very competitive as well. And when they get going on the AWP, it's very snappy. So at the moment, I wouldn't say Alice is having the best day. But if you can turn that around and really match it with Siko, that's when we're going to see some fireworks here. And again, we're going to go head to head here right now. Siko flashed out of position. It's actually going to re-aggress here. So not facing up against anyone but Rick. This dual AWP set up. This is... What we can expect from order rick though relatively unsupported for the moment and this is going to need rec re need the recruitment of his teammates to help him hold long but both orbs are towards a so this could get really hairy actually they could be forced entirely out of this bomb site if they don't take short They've only got the one player on short at the moment, Dexter, who's holding down that position. As the players pressure on long, Dexter goes out wide, and he catches one. Only the one. They now have the info, though. One towards CT, one up on short. The crossover should be possible. The smoke's already down. They've got flashes as well to play around at Molly to stop the push or boost. That spray, though, it was so good. So much damage dealt to Ince. But Sicko already low. He'll sit down towards long. He doesn't want to risk crossing the smoke and being spammed to death. And this, this is not a great position for Renegades. The players towards the B side still have all their utility. As Jira and Valiants come back in for this retake, it's a smoke, molly, two flashes, and a nade. Or three flashes, excuse me. The fact that they, they can still definitely have get control back into short, this. That, that's the mm -hmm. staging area for this retake. And Ince is like, what, 6 HP, tucked in goose? That's a very common spot to throw that nade into. A lot that can be done here. <laughs> yep. No options whatsoever for Rick as soon as that went down. That's the only problem with the double up setup too. It can make for really, really, really tough retakes. And Renegades find themselves another round. I feel a little bit of history repeating right now as the early start was won by order, but Renegades have just started to reel them back in a little bit right now. They've given them a little bit of slack in the line. But when Renegades feel as though it's time to reel back in, just like anybody, they like a good fight with a sporting fish, but order, I don't think they're going to be given enough rope. No, I, I doubt it. Renegades are not looking to mess around. We've seen that from them in this tournament. There's no letting off the gas pedal. They are full, fully in, in every single game that they've been playing. And certainly when it is the series to decide your spot in the major, they're going to want to just dominate this. That round went well for them. Uh, staving off the retake in surviving on his low HP. Again, a well-placed nade could have completely turned that round on its head. Ricky, this time successful with the op, opening it up on long, but they've spotted him now. Not wanting to go to the B site just yet. Obviously, pushing against pistols on B can be risky, but also, do you really want to go crossing over on the op? the other side of the coin but with double smokes down triple in fact they'll feel pretty comfortable in just crossing over and getting themselves into a comfy position there's a gap though and an opportunity that ricky connects onto but it's through the little basket leaving malta with 20 health gonna be able to get onto this bomb site get that plant though most importantly you can see that once i knew where rick was with that uh oh, the utility was good enough to get them out into short but Key fight coming out at the moment. Hats, just get that Molotov off, son. He needs to get it away. Number advantage still remains with order, but the player advantage is not so. The bomb has gone down, and well, the timer is on this round here. Hats now needs to channel his DM prowess. He cannot, and that is a great retake. Rick really holding strong down at long. Really important that he did so, and he delivered when they needed to. He said he was a bit quiet in that first map on 
vertigo, but now he's starting to wake up a little bit. We saw how much better Order can play when they've got both Eustillo and Rick playing. Definitely. I think the double op setup that they had two rounds ago when they lost, I wouldn't even put it down to the, the double ops and the retake, really. It was the fact that Ricky had two opportunities to take kills and miss them both. And then in this round, he comes through out for a vengeance, hitting every single shot and easily making up for the mistakes of the previous. At this stage, the players are close. Oh, they're given instant opportunity. Flash through. He doesn't find the kill, but Hats is here to trade. Ustilo, ever the monster, though, comes in with his own little double and keeps order in not only alive, but in the advantageous spot. The flash blinded up Ali. Didn't blind the tease in Sicko. Well, that smoke didn't even obscure his vision as he's able to take the kill through it. And the smoke on the cross, Ricky's got an angle. He's seen a player go to the site. Oh, that was, that was an insanely close flick to the right. What the hell? Great molly, though. That's just going to delay the plant. Buy some time, right? Let's Valiants get up behind on long and stand in position to hit this retake at the same time. What they have to be worried about, though, is that op now still in play. Sicko posted on an angle, and it's short that he's holding, waiting for the peak to come through. Ooh, pulls off it, and you don't want to introduce timing to it. That could work out poorly for him. And there you go. He's holding it right on time as Ricky rounds the corner. Valiant's playing a very risky game by running up close here. He's still going to go for this in the 1v2. I guess they're far behind. Well, they're starting to fall behind and they want to get back up there, but uh, I, that seems a little bit risky to me. Yeah, see the economy. They're going to use that right at... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that one, Chief. I what? don't know about that You're one at all. You're forcing up? Is this, this is madness. If they save the rifle and force up, at least they've got three rifles. But what is this, Jim? I think Yustillo's actually bought an MP9, handed it over to, to Jira as well. So, poor Valiance. He's the VIP. He just doesn't have 200 armor. I, 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 uh, I disagree with this by immensely. Immensely. It seems so aggressive for a team that in the last couple rounds, remember, they've just, they've not been dominated. They have been falling behind in a lot of duels. I don't think they're, they should be in a spot where they're this confident with their game plan. And then Estilo pushing all the way up. This is reckless. I mean, it didn't really catch them off guard, did it? They were ready for that. Yeah. And it's a massive risk as well, considering that they've, they've forced but up in this round to throw something like that out. I guess it's... Dangerous Ooh. game to play. Rick's just going to fall away from that as well. Here we go. Control from short coming out. Now we know that Renegades can stage and execute from here. So a lot's going to be placed on Rick right now. Let's just see if Rick can roll with this. Does take one. They're turned away. Doesn't find a second. Hats. Pick the pivot. And they should be able to get control of this bomb site and get that bomb clamp. The flank is going to be pivotal. Oh, pivotal. Alistair. A lovely long lock of hair of his has been clipped. And there's nothing really. They have nothing to work with in this round for the retake because they force board into it. And there's nothing they had to offer. Maybe able to pick up some extra weaponry here. Valiance, though, doesn't land another shot. And I think they know where Jira is here because they have not pushed into lower dark whatsoever. Sicko was already watching it. Watching, waiting, and now, unfortunately, it seems like it's time for commiserating because order, they're on an eco. They're not going to be able to get anything out. And uh, yeah. I do feel like, look, the reality is uh, some of those players were double eco, I think one, maybe two, but they could have dropped over. They could have played up the round. Or if you're going to force by, why did they go in for the 1v2 with Valiance? Like, there's just so many... Things there you could have vetoed, but it, the way they played the round before didn't seem like they wanted to. Just looks like not everybody's on the same page on that one. Or they're playing with a confidence that versus Renegades doesn't seem to be grounded in reality. Renegades are just playing this asphyxiating brand of Counter Strike right now. And that order are just being pushed and bullied around. 
I do need to wrestle back some momentum here. There has been some good signs of life, though. We said that the uh, the veterans needed to fire, and they're starting to turn up. You still are probably not to the level that he wanted, but Rick at least has been quite solid in his defense. Uh, if we see someone else like Ali start to step up as well, this will give Order a fighting chance. Well, now it's money-making time. Malta's out there absolutely farming some cash. He's picked up a Zeus as well, and he's entry in mid with it. Good lad. It's all about just making money with the Mac-10. 3.5k under his belt. At this point, 50 HP, I'd probably just give that... Okay, it was instant took it. Yeah, I'd probably just give that Mac-10 to one of his teammates and let them go and look for a little bit of extra money. That's one thing I think a lot of teams just don't do correctly. It's in this position... Chances are he dies. You die, you lose your armor. Is that worth it? Absolutely not. And look there, he's dead because he's running around mid with a Mac-10. Why? Give it over to Ince. Give it to Dexter who's got full HP. Let them go and then try to farm the money. Switch things around a little bit. Share the love, if you will. Exactly. But there is no love lost here for Renegades. Tactical timeout coming out for order and... I think this is still at the right time for them. Yes, they are down 6-5 to five against Renegades, but things aren't spiraling out of control yet. They gave themselves a good enough start to allow themselves back into this half, but the onus is on them to stop what Renegades are doing. Re As I said, Renegades are just going for these early round picks, utilizing their long spawn quite a bit, just trying to get the entry there. And... If not, if all else fails, they really haven't put a lot of pressure on B or mid just yet. A lot of that pressure has come on A through short. So, order are the ones that need to adapt to that and make sure that they do try to stop what's happening. I think the, the best thing that they can do right now is stop trying to concede early picks. Stop trying to aggro Renegades at the moment. Apps play a little bit more passively. I can see the onus that's being placed on taking control of long. And this is much better, actually, from order. Because a hold like this is much harder to dismantle than what they've shown previously. The Renegades firmly stuck together. Unlike anything I've ever bought from Ikea. Nothing to do with the quality of their furniture. It's to do with my craftsmanship. Which is horrendous. At a certain point, you just feel like not even using the, the screws and stuff. Just duct tape it together. Be grand. It'll work. You haven't been using Alan's keys. <laughs> Good old Al. I've still got his keys. Had them a few years now. Hope they're not for his front door. Poor bloke could be locked out. By the way, just speaking of that, Jim, in Australia, if you leave your front door, right, you close the door, and you're now outside your house, can you walk back in? Or do you have yes. to get a key? Oh, uh, that's weird. Usually you can. That's really weird. Let's just see whether uh, or not Rick's going to leave the door open here at B. There's a great hold, actually, from Valiant. Stays alive, keeps the crossfire intact. But this mid presence from Renegades has also been removed as well. Bombs down in B. Malta. Not a lot he could do there. You still owe. He was just so patient in that round. And yeah, I think Renegades walked out their front door, turned around, and they were locked out. Counter win. <laughs> they must have locked it behind them. Yeah, there was uh oh well, no it's it's not so much house actually that's wrong because that's the same in my house if i unlock my door i can go in now what, I, what i'm actually thinking of is like hotel rooms and like apartment blocks to me most places i've been when you close the door it's like locked when it like it doesn't open from the outside and you have to you know put the key in to open it but uh that's not how it is in ukraine so i left an apartment with a really expensive pc in it for like 24 hours just Doors open. Anyone could have just walked in. Open invitation. I'm smart. Exactly. Oh, here we go. That spray not connecting. I mean, when full blind, it's a lot harder. But that <laughs> that decision making to run through the smoke after, I don't know about that. Right into Jira. Jira just got center punched and managed to control his recoil. So somehow copped a bink through the door. 
So managed to pull down hard enough on that M4 to find himself a second frag, but the faster approach from Renegades ought to have seemingly been able to just deal with that. It's a slow approach that they're having a lot more difficulty with. I'm feeling like Renegades maybe got a little bit too confident on that one. Maybe a bit of a misread, though, on the players that would be on long. And we've seen a couple of times when you've got the smoke down on the corner that you're only going to have, like, the one player there. And the other's playing up behind it. That's what Order have done a few times, but on this occasion, they had many in towards the pit. It was the three-man early play, and, and that's... They ran right on into the trap. It's a disappointing round for Renegades, that's for sure. And... Yeah, especially because the T-side in general on this map is favored, but also Renegades on the T-side. I mentioned how typically they finish between 9 and 10 rounds. More on the 10 side of things than the other. And as I said most recently, it was a very domineering uh, show from them when it came down to uh, the game up against Order. They got a 7-4 T-side, and it was their second half, so the game was over at that point. But already, we're seeing them perform much, much better on Order than that previous matchup. Don't get me wrong. Order have done themselves a world of good to getting seven CT rounds. That's a great effort against Renegades. They've given themselves every possible fighting chance. It's just that, obviously, we have the full benefit of seeing all the X-ray, all of what's going wrong for themselves. And the mark of a great team is obviously not having all that information, but still being able to make a similar read. And that's the level I expect out of these order players. They've been around the block a couple times or maybe more. Seen the sights, had the lights on every foreign shore. But Alistair is forced to fall back. So it is a 5 versus 5 retake here. The force by coming out from Renegades. Inns is going to be the real point man. And this is a really patient retake coming out from order. They are going to have the utility to deal with this as well. So need to be careful that they don't get cleaned up at short. And they should have an easy passage in. Well, that's certainly the caution that we needed. But the molly through those pistols can't really swing on them. They've avoided the flash of posts, but there's the second. Oh, no! What? Kills still go their way. Malta just spraying on the deagle catches it. It's a 2v2. This is winnable. There's a player in Gandalf they have no idea about. And he's looking to work his magic. It's Dexter. Hit up behind. Swings out for one. And the spray is good for more. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Dexter really showing what he can do that is a uh, round for renegades and seven to seven oh they break into short that's a completely different round they didn't though and that is a round going the way of renegades and that's the thing you can't afford to give these sorts of rounds away to renegades the force bite that should have been something order capitalized on totally they got their way into the bomb side it wasn't five versus five in that retake but the positioning from renegades they were just able to force the fights that they needed there great Double pick coming out. That allows Alistair to open up onto Sicko. I think that is one of the first few times that they have gone head-to-head -head in that duel, and Alistair's actually come out ahead. So always difficult to make it work on the CT side with the AWP. And oh, the onomatopoeia is getting the better of me at the moment. This Dexter looks to get the better of order right now. Split the map. And this is that's a great smoke. Trying to peek into CT, but he's just going to give the illusion that he's going to be doing so. As Inns had it sharp. Jira goes down, and this is actually going to be now Dexter peeking out mid, just trying to harass, stop that rotation coming through, keep CTs locked in place. He knows that he's got a CT locked into the spawn, and that is allowing that bomb to rotate back towards B. So he is a real thorn in the side. The real problem potentially is Ali falls... And CT's completely split open. Valiants can't really do anything at this point. And the Thorn strikes oh, straight oh. through his head. As Valiants falls, you steal a left in a 1v3 where he'd normally save. But the last round of the half, he's got to go for it. Try to get right up back in there. But uh, look at this. Tucked away in the corner. Dexter's ready for him to walk on through. Looking for the 3k. And a steal. Oh, he wasn't aware of it. But he still catches him off. Unable to take down ins from behind, though. That is 8-7. And Renegades win out the half. It is a, a still a good half for them, for sure. But compared to their normal performances, not as good. As I said, last time it was 7-4 uh, against Order when they were on their T side. 
and they were really amping it up as well. So it was looking like it would have been a very domineering if they had played the full 15. At this point, I think I'm confident in saying order looked better. And that fills me with faith that they can get back into it now on the T side. Order have put together a really good CT half. Let's not take that away from them at all. Yeah. I think Renegades were the ones that really had to try and up the ante to get their way back into this. And don't get me wrong, some great displays of firepower coming out from Renegades. But there's a few rounds there where Order could have had a better half score. I mean, that forced by round, that was a key example. But Dexter, mm -hmm. know where he's at right now, but he still manages to get one on 6 HP. Ins, the supporting role, best supporting actress right now. And that is a heartbreaking entrance to this second half for Order. No Academy Award. No award at all yet, but we'll see if the round's going to be awarded to them. As a long push ensues, and Malta holding down on range. He's had some really good rounds, but overall, a poor first half. The nade deals some serious damage, though. Going to help him out in the assist column if they can finish him off, but maybe he wants them for himself. Spamming through the smoke, dealing the damage. And with this order in a very rough spot as they make it through to the site, the smoke going to go down. Hats! On the back of flashes, just swings on through, takes down Ali and bails back for more. His teammates now rallied around in a full swing, and Renegades take the pistol 9-7. to seven. And What seemed like a fairly important round for Order overall has now slipped away, and with no bomb plans, they're almost forced to concede this and give it to 10-7. It's also important to note that on this map, you'll typically see the CT side win the pistol round. It's a, it's a small favor, Oh, sorry, you'll typically see the T-side, excuse me, win the pistol round by a small margin, but it's 53% uh, of the time. And losing it out without a bomb plant, it's the percentage, I don't have the exact stats, but the rate of four spies are very, very low. The full eco is pretty much the only choice. Yeah, that is some harrowing scenarios here, but right now, Siko is going to scout, scout let it all out as... He may be aggressed on actually. There's not a real urgency to try and pour, push the issue here for order. Now, let's just see whether or not they can group up here. There's absolutely nothing that they have to throw at the CTs right now. Just sheer, unbridled, angry mob aggression. Bringing it straight to them. The jump peek around. That nade is perfect. Got to be a kill off the back of that. Sicko swings. Takes down Valiance. Ince on another. And with low HP on your Stilo, who barely managed to evade that nade, he should be taken down. They're just tapping at his feet. But Ricky oh, survives. Oh, oh, oh. There's the shot to you, Stilo. Ricky trying to cause some punishment. But Malta is quick to take him down. A bomb plant at least. And I think if you're order realistically, that's a success story. Absolutely. They got into A with nothing but numbers. That's it. They had nothing to throw at or at uh, Renegades whatsoever. Order, got to be happy with that. Minimal investment, aka it was burnt early on in the piece, and that's it. They've got themselves a warm plan. A gun round coming out as well. No AWP, though, on Alistair. So, unfortunately, he's not able to try and challenge Sicko at the moment, who's just retained that scout. So... Still a dangerous prospect, though. M4 plus scout tag can really mean uh, a troubling time for order if they're not careful. And I think Sicko's, at least for the moment, just sticking around this A bomb site. But, I mean, he does like to get on the move as well. It's just going to spray through the smoke, but he won't connect anything. Now there's a lot of pressure on Hats. What can he really do in this position? Dexter falls straight away. He's stuck under the window. He's being peeked from everywhere. And that is the site fallen. Renegades with a man disadvantage. Retake of B with the scout? Doesn't look very likely. I'd imagine at this point they will just call through for the save unless they find a kill almost instantly. I do like the positions, actually, as Ince was hunting down a kill trying and hoping that someone from Order would overextend, they still had short being watched by Sicko. Because it's a very common move for the T-side, especially if they got into position that quickly, if they still have somebody around tunnels or short, that they would push up short, and as soon as a player is spotted spraying away in CT, they would drop down behind. 
In fact, we saw that in just the other half when Ince dropped down and killed Eustilo. Order get a very important round for themselves though, Mitch. I think it's it's important to note that Order had a great CT side. They were giving themselves the best possible chance, but I, I'm sure they're still shaking their head at a few chances gone by. However, full focus now on Renegades, who are retaining some weaponry from last round. Hats obviously buying in again, as well as Malta, but some save weaponry here and there. Sika, super confident. Just trying to aggress on mid as well. But look at that. They're double grand into upper. And they are going to try and push on it here. They, uh, oh, SMGs and M4 combo. You find two opening entries. So this is not good for order. We had a clear weaponry advantage going into this round. Not the way you want to lose it, really. It's all about context, right? And even though they've got a little bit of cash for the next round, the most players in T-side, you can make that work for sure. If they lose this round, they're going to feel gutted because of the kind of buy that they're up against. They've been taken down by an MP9 and an M4 and made no progress for it, right? There's no... It's not as if they got those kills, but at least they've taken long or something like that. Like, no, this is... This has just been a disaster for order. Where do you go? What do you do from this point? You know, they're going to rotate down mid with the bomb. and Oh, the bomb's sticking outside of B, so mid to B split possibly with a smoke going down from Valiance. No eyes on mid either. That's the, uh, the important point to note is how passive they're playing right now. Rick gets that really important entry onto B here now. Is he going to continue to push on here? Does get taken down by Hats. The bomb has been spotted. The rotation's coming through. And now the numbers start to flood through mid. They need to be careful though because the CT's going to be pushing through the smoke. And they're just going to, in fact, play around it. They will get themselves onto this B bomb site, and the plant will come through. So, Order pulling this out of the fire. They need to be careful, though. The flank from Malta is good. And Valiance goes down. A lot of work to do for Alistair here. He's going to have to fight this one. But Siko, with patience, poise, and elegance, sits outside the site. And they will take an 11th round for Renegade. Renegades doing it all, doing it dirty to Order, who now come down to their last dime and dollar on this investment. I'm guessing this is where we're going to see the AWP really come through in force. It's going to need to be something else. As for Ali, he's not having the best of games. And on Dust 2, we need to see a whole lot more. In fact, based on spawns, Ricky has got that off, and he's going to be going for the long peak straight away, getting around that corner. Good Ooh. shot and great decision by Order with an opening duel going their way. That's an important early entry for the T-side. You said earlier that both these two teams are really good at converting their opening frags. Well, that is the one that Order needed in this round because this is crucial for them. The city economy is by no means out of jail either. So they can really grind themselves back into this by taking this round. They just need that 80% conversion rate to go their way. Yep. This is uh, this is somewhere you can definitely imagine order taking it across the line. More so because they're on the T side. So it's not like they can be pressured on a site where they've only got two players. But hold on, Sicko, he's looking to cause the pressure. Pushes forward into Ali who's holding the angle and wins that fight. I don't know how he's done that. Dexter's managed to find another. Ustilo's been headshot through the wall. What is going on here, Jim? Renegades are right back in the driver's seat in this round. Ustilo is lucky that there's not a nade in play to just come through and take him down. And they've just lost control of short as well. Dexter's aggressed on there, and he has three Renegades in tow with him here. So this is on Valiance. He finds one. That's as good as he can get. As now Ustilo, he has to go full lobster mode. Maybe even crab his way out of it. As he is in deep danger right now, sitting on the site. He does have Rick in support. It's the two old hands. And they're going to need that slate of hand to get them across the line here. They're going to do the dance and they get it done. You still are in a pivotal position. And assisted by Rick to bring order back in. The CT money is not fantastic. So three players on that reset amount. And that, unfortunately for Renegades, means that they're going to have to surrender some of their lead. Unless we see some more of that pistol magic. 
gorgeous stuff. I mean, realistically, for order, staying alive in that position seems so unlikely. The retake had the man advantage in Renegade's Ustilo on low HP, but he's the one that head peeks through to close out the round. And as I'm sure Tom knows, that man is a lobster. He's just untouchable. His hard shell proved enough to keep him alive in those difficult positions. Dexter, this time, opens it right up onto him. He cracks him open, wants the tasty meat inside. And inside the bee tunnels, a rifle awaits, awaits, excuse me, for hats, multi, and, and right sickle right. all shut down. I rate that bait. Eight out of eight. In P250. Oh, no, P2000 even. Gonna need to get snappy. As Valence has no interest seemingly in taking that duel whatsoever. Inns gets close but cannot get personal. And Dexter is eventually swatted by Rick. And, well, I don't expect a buy round coming out here from Renegades either. So this is going to be Order getting themselves back into this match. Constant pressure on that CT economy. A couple of close rounds in the later stages has meant that Renegades have had their wings clipped. Flew a little bit too close to the sun, I guess. His order just <laughs> really pulled Poor back into this. I'm, <laughs> I'm impressed by what's going down, though. Honestly, order keeping themselves in it. We know this is a team that definitely don't ever uh, keep their heads down. As Ali was saying in the interview, they're in a position where, yeah, sometimes in, in some rough games, players get quiet, but it's on your teammates to really lift you back up, keep everything positive. That's exactly what they've been doing. Jira. Very close to being taken down on that one. Four health remaining. Up against USBs. That could get real dangerous real quick. But he baits them in for Valiance, who's now also quite low. Need to be careful. Ins. He can cause some damage with that USP. Malta as well. Just going to do the dance. He actually lands a headshot onto Rick. But eventually... Does get... Taken away. Ins and Siko. They're going to be locked out of this bomb site. They do manage to pick up two frags on the flank, though, so... No interest in going to collect any weaponry, though. So they're going to have to try and fight their way in. This is awkward. This is really awkward. But you still are. Just proves why he is one of the key players for Order. It seems as though every time there's an awkward situation at play, you still are just has the movement and awareness to reposition and find these jewels... And, of course, come out on top. You know, out of this point, at 11 to 11, Renegades, they need this round. They want to keep themselves in it. They want to keep themselves in the lead, more importantly, and not give order that little bit of a boost. I feel like that can be a turning point in a lot of games. Once your opposition has been down, they're down a map, and they, they all of a sudden come back in the lead this close to the end of the game. On the back of a couple rounds that very nearly went against them. They'll keep their head held high by default. And Jira, Ooh. well, he shuts down Ince to start this off through the smoke. What? And a headshot as well. That is one hell of an opening duel. And it was such an odd angle as well. It's not like he was in somewhere predictable. What on earth, Jira? He might have jumped above the smoke and seen him. That's the only thing that would make sense, I think. Yeah, I'm going to need to see that again. It it sounded more special than it may have been, but as an opening entry into this... Ah! Oh, Dexter, how have you gotten yourself into this position? He's just pushed his way into spawn with an orb. Malta has taken a duel with Valiant. Sicko chimes in as well. What is going on? They have just capitulated. That push coming through from Dexter has netted them a huge gain. And you've got to be scratching your head, Order. What has gone on there? How did he get around so quickly? And Jira, no doubt, is trying to get the debris from his teammates here as he concentrates on this one versus four. His weaponry is probably the only thing that he will be taking out of this round. I don't think the victory will come. As he's only got 20 seconds to work with, no bomb in tow, and all he's doing at the moment is giving away his position. So I think he's just being... Oh, wait, oh, he's been legged as well. Yep. He's just going to try and potentially die here for the timer. Attempt to take people with him. 
but Renegades, they stand up strong. So, you see players outside of the A site, outside of A long, right? You lose a player on short, so you push tunnels. Makes sense, right? Dexter, that, that's fine. What? Where is the thought process that you go, okay, I killed a guy close tunnels, I'm going to push their spawn. I'm going to get up behind them. That is just sheer confidence from Dexter. And a great read on what was going on. He realized that he just killed the lurker. I thought, hey, they'll never expect me to come right behind them like that. About as easy as they come. And now 12 to 11, Renegades do maintain their lead. And they're just one round away from forcing an eco out of order. It provided there's no bomb plants. This is a pivotal round for both these two teams. Hats, though. Aggressors on you, still out. Still out very much equal to that challenge and oh early honors in this round oh you still how did you manage that transfers onto ins i'm sure ins thought he had the jump on you still are. so he's giving him a two player advantage this just continues the, the scales continue to just tip in either team's direction right now which this is the penultimate rounds in this match are going to be of key interest to me because both these two teams are going to have a rough road to get there. Well, you saw Stilo leading the charge with his mini knife. He's coming in towards the B site where Dexter is just anchored down, waiting for them to come on in. He's got to hit some sick shots on this one. Starts out with the ankles of his Stilo, but it's enough to take him down because he was low. Great shot Ooh. by Dexter. Sicko's here as well, but a missed shot by Dexter. A Sicko falls. It leaves Malta's 1v2. He's got to pull it all the way back. A great, steadfast hold, but now peeking into an op, his chances oh. are pretty down low. Alistair was all over that as well. There was nowhere else the CTs were going to come from. He was just watching that the entire time. And I tell you what, Renegades may have some trouble here. Only one eco should come out from them. Their money bonus should be good enough to get them through here, but that is a great transfer actually from Rick. I think he even surprised himself by getting that, so... Just some upgraded pistols, while Renegades try and reset themselves here. Renegades need to be careful though, we've seen super effective pistols come out from... Oh, should I say, Order needs to be careful. Renegades have had some really effective pistols though. Ricky, he is just having a good time. Nothing that could be done against that. Even Hats is just plucked away at... Good round from Order. They keep it clean, and that's what they needed. Their economy wasn't fantastic either, so that's really going to help them in these last few rounds. We said about taking the lead, right? The mental block. You're finally back up there. Back in the game. It's been since round eight or nine that Order, order have been behind. They've struggled to really take the lead, but they've definitely been closely competing the whole time, making sure they were never too far behind. Now, it's time oh. to swing on in with the final, the closer, and my god, they're just getting destroyed. The run out on long sees zero success, and we saw a very similar round attempted by Renegades a while back, if not worse so, because they ran through a smoke, whereas this was a smoke edge of Molly, but, geez, that's just not gone well, has it? Order out of the round already, almost, and it's a 2v5, 20 seconds in. Dear me. Some of these rounds have uh, really capitulated quite early on in the piece. It's left, you know, teams in 2vx, 3vx situations. That's how quickly the opening frags and opening jewels are going away of some of these teams. So this oh, hats, again, they're pushing through this B site and they're getting results for it, with it. So... That's got to frustrate order somewhat because this is a huge round. They are going to lose. And Hats, again, has delivered. So back to 13 apiece. And the CT economy is a little bit healthier for it. They didn't take losses. And that was really important because now it's actually the T side that has to do a bit of money juggling to get themselves a buy out of this next round. Look at this, man. 15 seconds in the round, you've lost three players. And I get it, like, a little bit of confidence on display but in such an important round to just rush out long like that like i get it a, a couple times we've seen them get the picks there with the op and it was really solid it just feels a little bit reckless when you know renegades are going to be on a full buy and they've got that utility to really punish you for it and the current position of 13 to 13 this is it 
all in essentially some of the players on renegades obviously like sicko and in stone of a lot of cash their reinvestment has been fairly crippling even just for their utility but when you look over towards order as well they are on an eco if they lose this round without a bomb plant that is huge because it'd be 15 13 they might even force buy it up and at that point the game may well be renegades they need this round more than anything This round could decide the next couple. That is for sure. For either of these two teams, very, very much on a knife's edge. And a slower approach, though. I would have been a little bit frustrated if I'd have seen the same fury coming out in the early stages of this round as we've seen in the last couple. As, oh, just this slow approach from order. Taking territory. But look at this. They even positioned players outside of Upper Dark. They were expecting maybe another push to come through. It had actually been really successful for Renegades later on in some of these rounds. But watch these late grenades potentially come on short. Sicker. Just watching over. As soon as Order take control of short here, though, expect the double grain in. They were posturing for it before. Molotov. And the grenade. There it is. Well timed. Sico's got some work to do right now. I don't know if they're going to flash him off his position here. They should be able to. But it looks like A is going to be the target. It's going to be double smokes coming up first. Oh, never mind. They've backed off completely. They had their smoke set up and everything. But now they want to go in towards the middle area for now. And presumably B, you can see Ricky on the long rotate. This is a very passive hold as well. Look, smoke's going down into CT. Ats has to get the molly out, and he peeks out very wide, lucky to still be alive. Oh, he's going through it, up against pistols. And he, what, he swapped to utility there? What's going on? This round is being won by Renegades, but geez, that was an awkward fight on mid, Jim. I, oh, I don't no. think I've ever seen the likes of it. He, he pulls out utility, run through the smoke, realizes there's a guy there, goes back, goes through the smoke, pulls out utility again, and then backstabs. It's just ridiculous. The pressure of that round, you could see, just got to both of those two teams. Order. They had territory. They were setting up for smokes at A. The late call came through. Guys, mid to B, what's going on? Maybe they had information in uh, where their CT position was from that player. They heard them rotate off. In fact, Hats actually did go into CT. Despite all the confusion, when he came through that smoke, his positioning was known. They knew that there was potential for only one player at B. That's why I think that they went towards the B call. The call was made late. They didn't really attempt to sell a fake towards A, though. I think Sicko being flashed off that position might have actually helped them a little bit. But nonetheless, they are surely going to be frustrated with that as Dexter, the master hammer, perhaps even MC hammer, might have been a better term for him because at the moment he is obviously doing quite well for the team. He's been producing all series. I mean, for the last three months, I feel like Dexter's been producing great CS. Even longer. Probably the last 12 to 18 months. He's probably been at the top of the tree. This is no different. This is a continuation of that here. Renegades, they are within grasp of match point And of course, that spot, Major. Absolutely. I agree with you there on the, the alternative name. Great shot by Ustilo. Malta's down already. Ustilo goes out for more. A little bit greedy. And he shut down Deep Molly to cut off that off. That's a massive weapon taken out of the hands of Order. And it's going to be guaranteed taken out of the hands. Because since juggles it over towards the pit he's making sure it's not retrieved yeah you could call dexter mc hammer because whenever he comes around the corner it's here comes the hammer and you can be guaranteed when he says that you can't touch this that guy is just shutting them down with pumps and a bump and considering now we're at 14 to 13 it's great to have him in your corner sitting down with that op ready to take the shots and hey look if, if he gets peaked that's fine it's all good. Well, they're going to go towards B here, and look at Hats. He's pushing up. This could be key. This crossfire could be really dangerous here, and they are going to go towards this B bomb site. Watch for this flash to come over. Hats is going to be ever pivotal. He's going to be in the crater with a silver spoon, but he does not get fed. And Dexter now has to hold on to this. This is still danger zone here for Renegades. He holds strong, finds the first. Goes for the dose, go for the second. And he's eventually taken down by Rick, though. Time is ticking. Now, Molotov's going to make things difficult. It's going to slow his advance into this B bomb site. In fact, I think he's going to try and take the two jewels here. As he does go for the plant, Order need that money. And that is actually going to stimulate their economy quite well here. 
And the two versus one. That Molotov come through the window. It's just going to clear things out underneath. He's gone for the first. Sicko now. He's got the second. And Order are still in this. Oh, my goodness. The money from Renegades is good enough to buy again. But that is a round that Order desperately needed. We highlighted Ricky and Ustilo as players that needed to show up versus Renegades. And even with Alistair having one of the worst games he has in this tournament so far, this is a semifinals, the quarterfinals. This guy was huge. And yet, now he's having a really rough game, but they are keeping this team alive. Order 14 to 14. And the most important part about this, Jim, is that it all comes down to this round. Look at the money for both teams. Whoever wins this one has a much easier time at 15 to 14. This could be the round that gives Renegades the spot in the major, but it could also be what allows Order to bring us all the way to map number three. This round sets up everything that we will see out of the next. Will it be hearts in mouths on the 30th and final round, or will one of these teams have a much easier time to navigate their way through Order versus Renegades? As we said, Perfect World Oceanic League comes to a head right now. Valuable RMR points on offer. Alistair and Sicko, this duel will not take place early on, but it's good to see Ali with that AWP in his hands. It's actually Dexter, though, who will also be wielding. So any one of these players from Renegades has been happy to pick up an AWP at any time, but Inns has actually flashed out a short, unsupported there at the moment, too. So interesting to see him a little bit far forward, and he's quite quickly taken out of the equation. So order. They get themselves a good advantage going into this super important round. Malta, let's get spammed somewhat. So needs to get out of there quite quick. Takes slightly more damage than he probably wanted. But Alistair has found another pick here onto Dexter. So all taken out of the CT economy. This is not looking good for Renegades. No, it isn't. There's one kill for Hats at least. Makes it more doable. The smoke goes down. Order need to make a decision on where they want to go. 58 seconds as the ball moves towards the B site and the solo defender is Hats who is under pressure in mid. He makes it up to the site just in time. Creeps out towards the car. He's ready, but not good enough to get that kill. Yustilo snaps it up and puts it into a two versus four. An angle above perhaps for Sicko, but it looks like the smoke is obscuring him a little bit too much. And with the money in play for the CT side, I think we're going to see a save and Renegades playing for overtime here on Dust2. That is going to be the call. And I wouldn't be surprised to see potentially some hunting going on here. They're not going to try and overextend themselves, though. Maybe they get lucky and catch some Renegades out. But both teams realizing the importance not only of the round, but their economy in the 30th and final. And this is the match that we wanted, Mitch. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We did not want to see Order going out flat. And after Vertigo, I was a little bit worried. That's 16 to 10. Okay, it's not the most one-sided you've ever seen, but that is Order's map pick. And with lesser teams and teams we don't know as well, you, you would say, like, that's going to affect their mentality and yada yada. But we know Order keep themselves in it. They're a, a well-oiled machine. But what has surprised me the most is that Ali's performance here, it's, it's middle of the line for most players. But for him and what we've seen in this tournament, it doesn't add up. And yet, Ustilo, Ricky, they're here dominating in these deals. Ricky especially. He's close to dropping 30 kills versus Renegades. And Jira obviously had 28 in the previous. We've seen every single player on this lineup step it up at one point or another. Nobody in this tournament quite meeting uh, Alistair's 39 kills. But that was uh, <laughs> a once in a tournament That's... performance, isn't it? That's in a whole different class of performance, though. But right now, Order are radiating on that big Rick energy. That's what they're radiating on right now. So <laughs> it's Dexter that's providing the resistance for Renegades, and they're going to call on him now. If they want to take this to OT, they're going to need that performance. SMG's coming out, and, of course, a pistol on Sicko. So one of their key weaponries is going potentially short in the weaponry department, though. Inns has actually quite kindly handed his over. So... It's the spawn base pick attempt going out, and it's business as usual now for Renegades, at least for Sicko too. So Order have got to bide their time here. No silly mistakes. Otherwise, they could be seeing overtime. 
Run boost around the corner gains shore control for Team Mortar. And we've seen them set up in these positions, looking to smoke off and then instantly call the rotate. This time, though, it seems to be commitment. They've pulled that op shot out. The nade is shallow. Really good utility bait from Mortar. They, they've burned up quite a lot from Renegades with just one flash. And they haven't given away anything that wasn't already known by the CT side that there's at least one player short. Well, you would presume a deep flash to try and slow them down on the cross. But Sicko is continuously being blinded. Now this player is up close to him. He's being blind oh. for 10 seconds. And you steal oh, not good for the double, but really hard play by Malta. He's got to get more than just one. And he only grabs the second. It might not be enough. MP9's on the retake. They've lost their main weapons, their AK, their op. They're up close now, but a long range duel with an MP9. It goes to Hats, but that's all he gets. 16 14. And we're going to be going to map number three. Nuke is coming up next. And the winner of this map will go on to the major. Jim, what a game we're getting between these two teams. What an absolute performance, though, from Order. It started on that CT half. They got themselves into great positions and they were able to just elevate themselves to a map victory, which is the first time Renegades have gone down in seems what. What he's like forever. Gentlemen that also saw it from the sidelines, Tom Beers and Blair, what did you make of this one? Order were much, much better in the way that they approached that match. Especially, I mean, running with that big, throbbing Rick energy. I mean, what do you say about that? 29 kills.